When I found this clean, minimalistic kinetic clock project online, I thought it looked super cool. I showed it to my girlfriend and she was like, yeah, you have to make that. It's awesome, but it does have some challenges and I ran into some issues along the way. So let's jump into the video and talk about how I pulled this thing together. First, I got a power supply. I ended up getting a second later, but we'll get to that. I used white filament from Hatchbox. I ordered an Arduino Mega, got the off-brand there. I got a sensor shield, also off-brand online, and a bunch of cheap servos, 30 to be exact, and lastly, a real-time clock module. This makes up the main components of the project here and the rest is 3D printed. I estimated with my Ender 3 Pro that this took about 85 hours of printing. That's not including my mistakes and test prints. It took a lot of time to clean up a lot of the prints, removing supports where I needed them and getting them ready for assembly. Another critical step is to test every single servo. Out of all 30 servos that I ordered, only one of them was defective. Luckily, I had another one laying around, so this didn't stop my project from moving forward. After printing all the parts and getting them cleaned up, it was time to begin the assembly. I started out by attaching the servos to the servo brackets. It was at this point that I had enough of the assembly together that I could start doing some basic testing and calibrations. So included in the code, you'll see the calibration code. If you attach a potentiometer, you can start to feed the segments in. So I recommend testing this out and trying it out before you get the whole thing assembled. Powering this was really challenging because you have to not only power the Arduino, but you also have to power the sensor shield, which is what's distributing all of the power to all 30 servos. In the end, I ended up just using two power plugs, which is definitely not what you would want to see in a finished product. However, I could only spend so much time on this project, so I had to just call it. I'm sure somebody out there on the internet can figure out something better. I would love to hear your input and thoughts. Continuing the assembly, you can see that I've got the both faces printed out here and all the servos and the brackets assembled. Next I'll move on to getting this whole thing wired up. As you can imagine, it took some time to wire up all 30 servos. I had to be extra careful to make sure that I put them in the right spot. So I made a diagram to help. I ended up changing the code and the diagram slightly from the original post because I could not get servo pin 10 working on this shield. Now things are starting to get really fun. It's time to bring back the potentiometer calibration code so that you can feed each of the digits in and then what you're looking for on the serial monitor there is what the low and the high position should be and you'll update that in the top of the code. This ensures that your low position for each digit sits flat with the surface and your high position comes out to a consistent distance from the surface. So it gives you that cool shadow effect that makes this clock so unique. The original creator did a good job of putting this project together and documenting what he did, but I couldn't tell how he was powering it. I couldn't tell what the back of the clock looked like. Putting the project together, I realized like, it was a little bit unpolished in terms of like something that you could gift or something that you could put on a shelf. So being a product person, I did my best to kind of make it more holistic and kind of tie all the pieces together. I organized all the cables um, with zip ties. One of my favorite things to do is to organize cables. So, you know, maybe I didn't have to do that, but I like to do that. All right, so this is my eight and a half hour print and it is a new base design that I came up with. So now I gotta crack it off the build plate, which is process, to say the least. There she is, my new design. So the Fox slides, slides in there, the RTC module goes there, the other half of this print will hold the uh, Arduino, and then this will hold the power supply. So Let's see if it works. Perfect. Okay, so here's the old one. This is a good 
bed proof of concept. And we just click this baby in. There, so let's check that out. That's pretty good. Now the back side is where the magic happens. So, like I said, there's still a piece missing here that's gonna hold this like that. Yeah, we did it. What do you think? It looks great. Appreciate that. Very detailed input. A few things to note about this project. I ended up running it off of two power supplies because I'm just not smart enough to figure out how to power it off of one. Another thing is the servos that we're using were very cheap, so it's loud. So not like the best thing for a quiet study room, um, but it's, it looks really cool. I'm sure you could find some quieter servos at a higher cost. The last thing that I would do to update this design is to use less hot glue in the process. So when it came to the base and attaching the Arduino to that base that I created, I ended up just using a bunch of hot glue. What I would like to see is something that can be snap fit together or something that can be easily screwed together and disassembled for ease of maintenance. This is what I did with the project. Um, I'm very open to you sharing your thoughts and ideas about how to improve it or ways to enhance it. I had a super fun time on this and shout out to the original creator, shout out to the Reddit community for helping me so much with this and join me for my next project.